be something there. All right, let's read 9, 10, and 11 together. But we have the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. He also help you together by prayer for us, that are your gift be sold upon us by the means of many persons. Thanks may be given by many on our behalf. All right, to verse number nine. But we, who does the we refer to there? Any hands on that? Yes. People? Yep, the people, at the Paul, the leaders, at Tammy. Okay, Paul and Timothy. Uh, in that first verse, it talks about Paul and Timothy, does there in the back verse? What is that verse that tells us about Timothy? Very right end of the chapter? Timothy is in the first verse. Oh, in the first, there he is. Okay, so uh, Paul and Timothy, workers yeah, together. Whoever was with him. Whoever was with him. When he was in Asia. When he was in Asia. And uh, now, what does true of Paul in the past, that he mentions in verse number nine, what was true in the Past, any hands on that? Pastor Dan. Sentence of death. What do you think that might refer to, Pastor Dan? Well, there's many things. I mean, as far as he himself was was left for dead, and but as far as they were pressed out of measure, mm -hmm. beyond strength, you know, that he even came to the point of their own life. Mm -hmm. and so they would they would think as though they'd had a sentence of death. Himself's physical death. Mm -hmm. Probably, probably stoning there at, uh, at Lystra. He was, we believe, he did die. What the heaven saw. So, sentence of death. And, a, and what was the purpose of this sentence? You think, in verse number nine? Any hands on that? What's the purpose? In order that what? The hand, the bond. That we should not trust in ourselves, but in God. All right. Uh, are are many people trusting in themselves rather than God? Any hands on that? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's right, Linda. Tammy? A lot of people think if they do good works, then God will grant them entrance into heaven. Yes. Our trust, we are feeble. We're just human beings. And to trust in ourselves rather than our God, the God who created the heavens and the earth, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the whole Trinity, not in ourselves, but God which raiseth the dead. What sort of raising is that, do you think? Any hands on that? What kind of raising is that? Is that yes, Lynn? Pardon me? Born again? It could be. What else? Best name. <coughs> Physical resurrection. Okay. Do all preachers in all churches believe and teach firmly that God has bodily raised and can bodily raise people from the dead? No, they don't all teach that, do they? They just say raised, but never say bodily raised. Even in the uh, Easter time, sometimes the pastors say he rose, he rose, but not bodily rose. Not just the spirit. A lot of them deny the bodily resurrection. And here it's very clearly, don't trust in ourselves, but in God who raiseth the dead. He's able to raise the dead. One day he'll raise the Christians. Which of the genuine Christians who've died will go first before the Christians that are alive and remain. Pastor Dan? The dead in Christ. The dead in Christ. Genuine Christians are dead in Christ, rise from the dead, bodily raised with new resurrection bodies. And then, who's next? Tim? The Christians that are alive and remain. The genuine Christians say they're alive and remain. They will be transformed with new bodies. Corruption, putting on incorruptible bodies, and mortal subject to put on immortal bodies and God is able to raise from the dead. Then in verse 11, verse 10 rather, who does that who go back to? And he has, uh, by the way, questions at bftbc.org or 856-261-9018. Give us a call or comment. Let to hear from you to say hello or have a question or comment. Who does that who go back to? Any hands on that? Yeah, tell me. God. God himself. Now, there are three things that God did in verse number 10. What's the first? What's the second? What's the third? Any hands on that? What's the first, second, and third that God has done as Paul Any hands on that? Tell me. The first one is he delivered us, being fallen, 
All right. Whoever was with him from that great death. All right. The second. What's the second thing that he's done? And the hands on the And the other hands on that. The second thing. First, he delivered us from great death. What's the second thing? He passed it down. Continuing to deliver us. Okay, right now. Presently. What's the third thing in this verse that he's done? God has done for. We trust. Uh, what's it? Well, possibly what else? Keep reading. That he will be. That he will yet deliver us. Okay, now who does the us refer to? Very important. Any hands on that? Who does the us refer to? Genuine Christians? Genuine Christians genuinely trust the Lord Jesus as their Savior, believe He died for them, accept Him as their Savior. That's the only one. Now, what do you think that means? The first part, God who delivered us from so great a death. What do you think that means? And the hands on that. Tammy? Well, it probably has relevance to the sentence of death upon them, but it also could refer to their spiritual death before they were saved. All right. And what is the final part of death that they were, that genuine Christians are delivered from? The hands on the, the ten? Hell. From hell, that's a great death. It's called the second death, isn't it? The second death. And does he deliver people that are not Christians from second death and from hell? No. Oh, no, they've got to trust the Lord Jesus as their Savior, accept him as their Redeemer who died for their sins. Questions at bftbc.org or 856-261-9018. Give us a call or comment or just say hello. Glad to hear from you. So that's in the past. Delivered us. Paul was delivered. All the genuine Christians have ever lived. In the past, if we're genuinely saved, he's delivered us from hell. And it's final. And then as a present deliverance, it says right here in verse 10, as we mentioned, death who does deliver. What type of deliverance do you think is that? Any hands on that? God who does right now deliver. Tammy? Delivers from sin. All right. The power of sin. Delivers from the power of sin. And also, I mean, possibly from, you know, uh, if someone was going to kill him, you know, uh -huh. there was, there were maybe <coughs> circumstances in our life that mm -hmm. he delivers us from. Yes, accidents, for example, in cars today when we live and so on. So there's a present deliverance. And what does that word deliver mean, do you think? What's the general sense of that word? They hands on that. Three times it's easier. Deliver, deliver, deliver. Past, present, future. Questions at bftbc.org or 856-261-9018. Give us a call or comment. Pastor Dan. I guess from destruction, so it's out here. It delivers from destruction. All right. Yes, Tammy? Rescue would be a synonym. Rescue is a synonym, that's right. Rescue. Anytime that you're about to have a very serious incident and you're delivered from it, you're rescued from it, you're taken away from it, it doesn't hit you, it doesn't smack you, that's true. So God's wonderful deliverance, past, present, and future, for us who are genuine, true Christians who love the Lord and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, and then in, uh, in verse number... 11, who's the ye refer also to in verse number 11? And the answer that, who's that ye refer to? Ye, Pastor Dan? Those at Corinth. All right, those genuine Christians that are at Corinth, he's writing to. And what is true of them? What have they done for Paul? It was mentioned in verse number 11. And the hands on that. What have they done? Damn it. They're praying for them. They're praying. All right, and what else? What does he call that? That's right, he's praying. They're helping. They're helping. And the helping is by prayer <coughs> for us. Again, the us refers to think to who? And hands Apostle, Paul. Apostle Paul and Timothy, those that are with him. And so the Corinthian, those that are genuine Christians in this church, are helping by their prayers. What else are they helping by in this first number 11? Any hands on that? What else are the Corinthian Christians helping? What are they mean? To Pastor Dan? Well, 
Also, well, also by the gift. It's good to pray, but also by giving of the funds, whether little or small, it doesn't make any difference. God sees the result of it. Whether it's a small gift of the widow that gives uh, almost all that she has, or whether it's a billionaire, uh, the gifts for us, for the gift bestowed upon us by means of how many people? Just a few? In this case, any hands on that? Yeah, tell me. Many, many persons. And it was Paul grateful for these gifts? And if so, how does he express it here in this verse? In the hands of that. Was he, was he grateful? In the hands of that? Verse number 11. Is he grateful for these gifts? Pastor Dan. Yes, he was grateful. He says, he, he, he says, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. So he's grateful, he's thankful, and every one of us who receive gifts should be thankful to the Lord, thankful to those that give us. I was very grateful for those that gave us gifts on when we were there, and gifts in the mail, and different types of things. For every time somebody gives, either to us personally, Mrs. Way and me or to the Bible for the Baptist Church and the men's Bible for today. We're very grateful for those gifts that come in. We thank the Lord for them. Uh, we never pound people on the head. We never hit them and say, this and this as many preachers on TV do. But we do thank and we pray for our needs. We praise the Lord for 20 years, going on 20 years of the ministry here in church. He's provided for those needs whether it's for the parsons, whether it's for uh, pastor and people, church and the missionaries, we're grateful for the Lord. All right, let's read verse number 12, 13, and 14 together. <coughs> for our rejoicing is this, that the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the work and more importantly to you word, to you word. For we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge. And I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end. Ye also ye have acknowledged, acknowledged in part that we are your rejoicing even as ye also are ours in the way of the Lord Jesus. All right, verse number 12. Uh, our rejoicing. What do you think that word implies, and is it still possible today? And what do you think that means? Any hands on that? Rejoicing. Best of Dan. It's an inward joy. It's, inwardly. Right. it's inwardly. It's inwardly being glad things of the Lord. In this case, in this, now there's a special thing that he's rejoicing in. What is it in verse number 12? What is that special thing for this? Yes, Tammy. Tammy. That um, they had their conversation in simplicity and godly sincerity and by the grace of God. Uh, all not right. In their, not in fleshly wisdom. All right, you're choosing. And it says the testimony of our conscience. What does testimony mean, and where, what is the conscience? Any hands on that? This testimony of our conscience. Any hands on that? Tell me. Testimony would be a witness. Okay, a witness. And how does the how, how does the conscience bear witness? In your mind. All right, the mind. And uh, what? How would you, how would we define? Conscience. Any hands on that? How do we define conscience? Your actions? Well, what is there in a conscience, Tammy? An inward sense of right and wrong. All right. It's like we said many times, like into a thermostat. When it's set for 70, it's down to 60. The thermostat says you've got to put some more heat on, bring it from 60 up to 70. See, if it's up to 80, you want it down to 70, it goes, brings it down. 
the conscience is what tells us what's right, what's wrong scripturally, and how is the conscience described, which is a bad, bad conscience in the scripture. Any hands on that? A bad conscience, Tammy? Well, let's sear it with a hot iron. Okay, what kind of conscience would that be? It's scarred, it doesn't sense anything. Doesn't sense anything, so they just go right out about the business? And many people, even today, not only in the scripture, have their conscience seared with a hot iron, so it's not operating anymore, rightfully. They just go right on their unbelief, right in their sins, whether it's drinking sins, sexual sins, whatever it may be, without even thinking about it. The conscience not even working anymore. Nothing to say to them, stop it, stop it, quit it. Questions at bftbc.org, rate 56261-9018. Comments or questions, or questions if you have them. So Paul says, our, our conscience, testimony of our conscience. Now, he says something that's true that happens, and various things that the conscience says. What's the first thing he says that he's talking about here, about the conscience and his life is living? And he has to that. The first thing he mentioned in verse 12. Just press it in. In simplicity. How would you define true. how would you define simplicity, Pastor Dan? Something that's very basic, something that's very elemental. All right. In other words, uh, there's a lot of difficult things, but this is a very <laughs> simple thing. And he says in simplicity, in simplicity, uh, what is he doing in simplicity? Now what else is he doing? Oh, oh, I forgot to take this off my belt. I hope I can make it. Hold on, let me see it. I got it. Yes, hello. Hi, uh, yes, Pastor Wait, This is uh, Rebecca and David Howell. Rebecca and David Howell, thank you so much for coming to the services. Yes. Praise the Lord. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> and praise the Lord. Amen. It was wonderful. Just want to make a comment about verse 12, the testimony of our conscience. And uh, it's a wonderful thing that the Lord's allowed us to. Um, be convicted in our conscience uh, when we sin against him and then also when we have a clear conscience and it's a testimony it testifies of our behavior um, of our thoughts our deeds and so the, the scripture is uh, really great because it just talks about Paul and Timothy and how they're overjoyed rejoicing and just so very happy um, with having that clear conscience and having just the simplicity as it says, the godly, godly sincerity, but um, it's just very simple and basic um, that, uh, that they have peace of mind, um, that they have a clear conscience, uh, that they're doing all for the Lord, um, and that they have a heart and a love uh, for the brethren. So I just wanted to make a comment about that. Oh, man. Well, thank you very much. Thank I appreciate that. Thank you, very much. Lord bless Rebecca and David Howe. Yeah, they sat next to us in one of the services when they were there. And appreciate it very much for coming. Surprising. It was about, uh, I think they said about five hours. Oh, so that's a wave. A wave to them. Absolute wave to Rebecca and David. You know, for a long time I had on my, my prayer and song sheet Robert or some other name or Stephen. No, he's David, just like our son David. So I said, when I come home, David, I'll correct that. And I've corrected that in the song sheet, so I'll always not call him David. <laughs> it's his name, just like our son. Appreciate them very much indeed. Also now in verse number 12, questions at bftbc.org, 856-261-9018. If it's a call or comment, glad to hear from you. Now it says in the positive way, the testimony of our conscience, says Paul, Paul and Timothy, those with him, it's in simplicity, first of all, and it's with godly sincerity is the second thing. What is every Christian Sincere and with godly sincerity, do you think? No. If not, why not? No. Now, what say, Paul? No, no. Why is that not the case, do you think? Any ideas as to what might not be so? Not, Paul? Not, you're not born again. Born well, again. it could be people not born again, not genuine Christians, wouldn't have godly sincerity. What about genuine Christians? Are sometimes they not too sincere? What is the Latin word mean sincere. Tammy? Without wax. 
Without wax. What's the origin of that <coughs> term, without wax? Tammy? Well, somebody would break a, a fine piece of china or whatever. Yeah. They, yeah. they could, they could um, fix it up with wax. Mm -hmm. And then it would be, you know, it would appear that it's, it's a, all in one piece. But mm -hmm. I mean, in reality, it's not because... There's, there's wax that's holding it together. Yes. So it's without any wax that will fix up a broken vase. It's nice to fix it up, but sincerity, absolutely sincerity. Real persons, real people, not fakes, yet t uh, Bill. Like the Pharisees in Jesus' time, mm -hmm. you know, they were artificial. Mm-hmm. They were not sincere, not real honest at all, but... They had uh, outside appearances and special phylacteries and things on their garments and feeling holy and, and not praying in private but out publicly so people could see them and the various things. Now notice those are positive things. Testimony and conscience, simplicity, God is asserted. What are some of the, the negative things that should not be followed by genuine Christians in their testimony? And he hands on that. And this first number 12. Questions at bftbc.org or 856-261-9018. What are some of the negatives, Tammy? Fleshly wisdom. What do you think fleshly wisdom would be in that verse number 12? Not in fleshly wisdom. Tammy? There's a passage in James. I'll, I'll look for it. Okay. The other hands on that, to, not with fleshly wisdom. What's the difference between fleshly wisdom and other kind of wisdom, for example? Any hands on that? Pastor Dan? I suppose you have spiritual wisdom to contrast fleshly wisdom. All right. One's of the, one's the flesh and one's of the spirit. Now, those that are not saved, they do not have the Spirit of God indwelling them, can they have spiritual wisdom? Wisdom? Not at all. They can't. They have flesh. They can learn in school, college, seminary, all different things, technical, technical schools. Dr. Wade. Yes, Paul. I forgot where it says in Scripture, but doesn't it say that the, the natural man uh, doesn't understand? I forgot where it says that. Receives out the things of the Lord. That says it's 1 Corinthians 2, 2.14, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's true, Paul. They don't receive the Spirit of God and spiritual things. 214, they have first Corinthians, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right, Paul. They don't receive that. But they have fleshly wisdom. Now, fleshly wisdom, what, Tammy? These verses in James, there's quite a few. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> do you mind my reading them? No, go ahead, James read them, three, please. Three to uh, eight, no, rather, James 3, 13 to 18. 3, 13 to 18, go right ahead. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among mm -hmm. you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Yes, those are good verses on wisdom that's proper. So it's in simplicity, God is sorry, not with fleshly wisdom. That says, by what means have we had this conversation in conscience? In verse number 12, by what means? Any hands on that? By what means have we had this? It passed down. Grace of God. By the grace of God. How do we define grace again? Many definitions. What are some of the definitions by the grace of God? Any hands on that? Tam? An acronym. Grace. God's riches at that's one definition. God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace. What's another definition we might use for grace? Pastor Dan? You see something that is not deserved. 
Okay, receiving something, getting something that we don't deserve. That's right, just getting something we don't deserve. Anything else on the meaning of grace? I think it's one more, but I can't remember. Did you tell me? God's unmerited favor. God's unmerited favor. Unmerited, undeserved. We don't deserve any God's grace. And so he's saying that every genuine Christian should rejoice not in, in fleshly wisdom, but in simplicity, in godly sincerity, and in the grace of God. By the grace of God, we've had our conversation in the world. Now, that word conversation, what does that mean in the King James 1611 definition? Pastor Dan. Manner of life, the way we're our, living. Our manner of life, the way we're living. It's not simply talking, but our general living, how we're living. We've had our conversation, our manner of life in the world. And what is the thing, not simply in the world, but how else does Paul mention he's living in that world in which he lives? Especially in the last part of verse 12. Any hands on that? What verse are you in? Verse 12. What is that last part? Not just living in the world in general conversation or way of life. What's that last part of that verse be? Be yeah, Pastor Dan. To you, Lord. Okay, and, and especially more abundantly to you, Lord, to those that are genuine Christians in Corinth. He tries to make his life, his, his manner of living, uh, by God's grace, especially more abundantly to those genuine Christians of this church. They need to have a good example. And Paul wanted to be that good example as we should be as genuine Christians. Now let's read verses 13, 14, and 15 together. For we write none of the things unto you that when he read or acknowledged, and I trust he shall acknowledge even to the end, as also ye have acknowledged us in part that we are rejoicing, even as ye also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. And in this confidence I was minded to come unto you before that ye might have a second benefit. All right, verse 13. Again, the we referring back to whom? Any hands on that? The Apostle Paul and Timothy, those that are with him, we write none other things than what ye read or acknowledged. And what does he mean by the difference between reading and <coughs> acknowledging? And he has on that. Questions at bftbc.org or 856-261-9018. Give us a call or comment. Yeah, Tammy? Yeah, um, could they acknowledge be what they know or believe? All right. And read is what they read. Read. It's All right. Read. And he read. What's the difference then between, that's right, reading something and acknowledging? What do you think that might be a 10? Well, it seems like there's an aspect of faith All right. with acknowledge. I mean, if you acknowledge something, mm -hmm. then you, you know it to be true. That's true. And probably uh, you understand it better. Okay. Barbara Master from New Jersey. Yeah, Barbara, go right ahead. Praise the Lord. Well, let's wave to Barbara Lamas right here in New Jersey. I'm glad you're able to listen, Barbara. Thank you for calling and telling us and sharing us that. And uh, we appreciate Pastor Dan's skill in making sure you can hear all that on the Internet. That's amazing to see how we can get that picked up. And so people go, listen. Other people on the phone have told me they've been listening to it. Very glad to see it and hear it. So we praise the Lord for it. Thank you, Barbara, for letting us know that. So the, the reading and then acknowledging. Now sometimes people read something, somebody they read letters and they never acknowledge the person that wrote them, thank you for that letter, thank you for that comment. See what reading and acknowledging, very important. And then uh, what does Paul in, hope that is the last part of the 13 in continuation, not simply reading and acknowledging, but what else? Any hands on that? 
the last part of verse 13. What is it? They keep acknowledging even to the end. I didn't see any hands, but I heard something out there. I know, I didn't raise it. They acknowledge, <laughs> what does it mean to acknowledge even to the end? What do you think that refers to? Any hands on that? To give, uh, to give thanks and praise. Well, thanks and praise. What else? Paul didn't raise his hand either. Continue. No, he well, he might have. He might have raised his hand. <laughs> Paul, did you raise your hand? Paul? <laughs> no, I said it to give thanks and praise. Or did you raise your hand? Bill wants to know that. Uh, I guess. <laughs> okay, I'm just joking. You know how Bill is a joker. Uh, so <laughs> that's right. So, uh, what is the the the, the answer to that? What else? Good Not question. so. Yes, yeah, Tam. We're going to continue to affirm those things. All right. Even even till the end of your life. The end of your life is to acknowledge the things that he wrote into them. Now, what he wrote was a scripture, wasn't it? Paul wrote the scripture about 2 Corinthians. And where did that scripture originate? <coughs> what language is he writing in, in the first place? That's number one. Who's got a hands on that? The hands on that? Pastor Dan. Greek. Writing Greek. And is that Greek still preserved as God gave it into this day? Yes. Does everybody believe it's preserved in this day? No. Does the, do the liberal modernist apostates believe it's been accurately transmitted in the Greek language today? No. Do some even so-called fundamental Bible-believing Christians believe it has not been preserved to this day? Do some of them deny that it's been preserved? Yes. Yes, they do. And uh, all kinds of ways. But God has promised. Now, where did this original writing, the scriptures, come from when, who originated every word in the New Testament Greek language in the originals. Who's the originator of those each each and every word? Any hands on that? Was it the apostles? Well, sort of, but uh, what else? Uh, uh, Tammy? The Lord Jesus Christ. All right, the Lord Jesus Christ, the originator. And what verses tell us that very thing? John. In the Gospel of John. And and how does, that, how does he phrase that? He's talking to his disciples, the Lord Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he says what? I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit, has come, he will guide you into all things. For he shall not speak of himself, whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He will not speak of or from himself as to the source. So you write in the events of the apostles, but the Lord Jesus gave to God the Holy Spirit the very words that he wanted to say. Then the Holy Spirit gave them to the writers, the Paul, Apostle Paul and John and Peter and James and all the others. Yes, uh, Linda? What's the difference between the disciple and apostle? All right, the difference between a disciple and an apostle. Any hands on that? Who's the difference? It's Pastor Dan. Apostles, it's more limited than the disciple. All right. They're limited. How many original apostles did the Lord Jesus get, Tammy? There were 12. Okay. And, and Linda? 12. And 12. And uh, how many were there after a while? Did any of them leave it, Tammy? Yeah, there were 11. Just down to 11. And then there were 12 again. And 12 Who left him originally? What apostle left the Lord Jesus? Yes. Judas. Judas. What's his last name? Judas Iscariot. How many Judases were in the first 12 apostles? Tammy? Two. There were two. And especially that Judas Iscariot is the one that was a traitor. Left. And as someone said, the 12 came down to 11. What happened to that one that left? He two verses. What is it? He hanged himself. He hanged himself. And apparently the, his body fell down, his, his, his body just fell apart. Two different verses on that. Elinda? Um, oh, you just scratched your eyes. Oh, oh. Um, yeah. It's coming there. Yeah, but it's 12 or, okay, 11. 11, okay, not 11. And then um, when Jesus was dying on the cross, um, okay. Yes. It was only one. Stood by him, and the other eleven hit. Okay, the other eleven hit. That's right. John. Was John was on the cross. That's right. 
Yeah, Anna, good to see you, honey. That uh, was his name. Judas That's right. Now, it's Tammy. Um, since we're talking about how many Judases there were, and then there was the Lord's brother Judas. Yes. And it, did, was he the author of the book of Jude? Or was Possibly. That? I'm not really <laughs> I don't sure. Really know for sure. Possibly. Right, I know. But, but Jude, technically Jude. He was, he was the Lord's brother. He was yeah. in the, one of the 12. All right. Okay. So how did... Yes, yeah, so how did the 12th come back? We had 12 to start, one left, down to 11. What happened to who's the 12th? Yes, Pastor Dan. The Lord Jesus Christ chose him, the replacement for Judas. And who was he? Paul. The Lord of Damascus. Okay. Acts chapter 9. All right, and what was his name? Yes, Anna. Well, at the time, his name was Saul. Yes, Saul. And... Uh, what do some people think that really was to be the twelfth instead of Saul or Paul? What was the argument even today? So are you the truth yet, Bill? Matthias was chosen by uh, the other apostles. Okay, not by the Lord, by the other. Uh, uh, Tammy? He was chosen by Lot, Matthias. By Lot, just by guesswork. And they just picked out two and flipped the thing and one or the other. Strange, yeah, neither but... One of the, neither one of them were the Lord's... The, the Lord's choice, that, that's right. So they were going to get it wrong no matter what. They were, they were wrong no matter what, see. And uh, a lot of people think it's Matthias, and uh, it's terrible, but does Paul ever call himself an apostle? Yeah. Yes, he called chosen of the Lord Jesus and Christ verse himself. One. He chose. Verse 1, right there, verse 1 here, Paul, an apostle, right there. Verse John, <coughs> I mean, Jesus picked the 12. Himself. Yes, that's right. And then when Jesus gone, there was another one? I didn't know that. Yes, but Paul was the other one because when Judas killed himself, he had a replacement. It wasn't Matthias in chapter 2 of Acts, but it was the Lord who chose Paul the Apostle. That's true. Well, these are interesting. Anna? This was after the resurrection and uh, after the ascension. After the resurrection and the ascension, and Paul the Apostle was chosen all the time. And uh, the Lord, did the Lord ever train the apostles while he was here on earth. Yes, he did. Did the Lord ever train the apostle Paul mm -hmm. after the Lord Jesus died? How did he train him? Where did he train him? How long did he train him? Any hands on that? How and when and where and how long was Paul trained by the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh. Pastor Dan? In Arabia. In Arabia. And how long, roughly? Yeah, about, about three or about three years, and uh, the Lord Jesus trained him and told him all the things, and so Paul was well learned as the apostles, the other apostles. Did Jesus teach the other 11, 12? The, oh, yes, 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 he did, absolutely. Now, the other question I have, why do you think the Lord Jesus chose a traitor, Judas Iscariot, to be one of the 12? Any hands on that? Questions at bftbc.org or 856-261-9018. Yeah, Anna. Maybe it was his father's will? Uh, Linda's father's will. Okay, what else, Anna? Um, well, because the fulfillment of prophecy. Yeah. Because he was prophesying. All right, that's true. That's one reason, isn't it? Why do you think else did he choose a traitor? What lesson can we learn from having a traitor among the twelve. Any lessons that we can learn today? Any hands on that? <coughs> yes, Anna? Well, some people are, will still reject the Lord Jesus Christ even though they, the, the truth is right there in front of them. They're still rejected. Uh -huh. That's true. In many churches, they have some that are not believers, not genuine believers, not genuine Christians. They're sort of fakes. They just act like them. They're not genuine. May the Lord want to teach us something. Not everyone that is in a church necessarily is genuine Christian, even though they may profess certain things. Oh, I will stop right here. Yes, Linda. Peter denied him, so he was... Yes. Peter denied him three times. Three times, he sure did. Yes, uh, Tammy. Um, I, I know I've seen it, but I don't remember. Where does it say about uh, being in the um, back, uh, in Arabia, that Paul, the Lord, 
Uh, the back side of the dumpster, the rear, I don't remember the exact place, I'll have to look at a rear, but I'd like to unless Pastor Dan can come up with it. Yeah, we'll have to look at it. Up, we'll look at it, yeah, Anna? Well, con contrasting Judas and Peter, um, after, after, they, after Judas betrayed the Lord, it says mm -hmm. that he repented, but it wasn't a, a godly repentance because he, he, um, he was sorry, now, he was, he, but he hanged himself. He had the incorrect response. Mm -hmm. But Peter, he went out and he, he wept. Yes. Really, and uh, Peter, he, he actually, he, he had the correct attitude uh, in response to his sin. I'm not explaining it very well. Well, that's good. And what did the apostles really say when they addressed the Lord Jesus Christ? And what did Judas say when they addressed the Lord Jesus Christ? And we'll pause that and we'll take that up next week. Any questions to answer on that one? Anna? The, the other disciples called him Lord, mm -hmm. but Judas called him Master. Very good. We'll stop right here. Any other comments or questions before we close tonight? Well, if not, let's close with a word of prayer. We thank thee, dear Father. For Paul's faithfulness to the believers, genuine Christians at Corinth, we thank the Lord that he was faithful unto them, that he had godly sincerity and a conscience that was free and a good life before them, a conversation, a manner of living that he could speak about in sincere, godly sincerity. Help us, Lord, who love the Lord Jesus, who are genuine Christians ourselves, to be godly, sincere, living for the Lord Jesus, lives true, faithful, help our conscience to do that which is right and godly. Help bring us back again in the Lord's day as we live for our Savior day by day. Thank you for bringing us back safely from North Carolina. We're glad for the meetings. We're glad for the blessings. We're glad that Pastor Dan made it possible for every one of us, all of our church, to listen to these conferences. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Thank you for coming. Yeah.